This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning, good morning everyone and welcome to another beautiful day out here in the African bush. We are starting off this morning having a look at the sunrise over the waterhole and my name is Amy and today with me behind the camera is Mpo and we are looking forward to being out here with you and we're just starting this morning nice and easy and as soon as I came around the corner and saw this scene in front of us I thought let's share it with you all and while we're sitting here I'm just taking in all the bird calls the scene there's a bit of mist over the water and in the distance there now remember this is a live and interactive show so please do make sure that you send through your comments and your questions to us we would love to hear from you you can do that in all sorts of ways whether it's on the app on our website on x using the hashtag wild earth or you can pop your comments into the youtube chat stream Beth, well, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here, that you're joining us. And I do hope that it is an epic one for you. We've had some amazing drives the last few days. And so we are both, Cedric and I, out and about. And when I saw the scene, I knew that we couldn't go by without starting the show here. And this is what it feels like. This is what we wake up to every morning, not necessarily always looking the same, but there's this sense of, and really is a sense of a new day. Dawn is about to break. Soon the sun's gonna peek up over the horizon there. Not a cloud in the sky today completely clear 360 degrees Kelly that's great uh, glad you're feeling refreshed and ready and you can't help but feel like all the possibilities lay ahead for us this morning one of the reasons I love waking up early starting my day even if it's not with a game drive but it's so exciting to be at the precipice of adventure and finding new things I'm going to be looking for some lines this morning there was a bit of action on the dam cam last night I think those were the males we were with earlier uh, in the evening they've come they came down for a drink here at this waterhole 
and Cedric's going to be following up with Shudulu and Nene which are two leopards that were on a kill yesterday But who knows what else we are going to find. And that is why we all love the bush so much. You never quite know what's going to be around the next corner. Alright, well, while we sit here and take in the scene, let's have a look at what your weather is doing today. Thank you so much and as you can see that uh, the weather is going to be fantastic today and I just came into the area where Shudulu and Nene had the, the kill from yesterday but it looks like uh, the tracks have gone further down Zoe's with a, a female line tracks as well but anyway good morning everybody my name is uh, Cedric and behind the camera with me we've got a panda all right let's see what we can get I'm gonna go a bit further down on Zoe's Looks like all tracks went straight south. There's nothing, nothing, nothing here. Nothing has been hoisted. Um, I'm wondering if maybe that uh, that lioness didn't steal the kill. Let's go and try and follow up a little bit here. Coming back onto Zoe's. So all the tracks is going down this side here. Got a lion and a leopardo. Yeah, let's see, let's see. And yes, for my rips, we will keep you updated. We'll keep you posted. Uh, we'll head over that side earlier. I must have just, uh, or late on. Uh, we just uh, gonna wait for, we're just going to wait for the Sobby Sands to get hold of me this morning. And then they can give me that update. And then, yes, I will let you know exactly how it all went down with his waking up uh, last night. So, we can pick up on that a little bit later on. All the, the leopard tracks all went down here. Let's see, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Jordan. You say, hopefully, my reefs had a good night last night. I'm also hoping so. So, I'm just going to put my radio here because it seems like but no uh, terrible comms at this area. But let's see, yes. I'm hoping that my reefs had a good night last night. I'm hoping that uh, you all pretty much uh, recovered nicely. He's got himself a meal there, but as I said, I will keep you updated about that. Uh, tracks all went down here. So yeah, they must have lost that kill last night. There's lion tracks, there's all the leopard tracks are here. Hmm. Yeah, I just got all these ingwen, looks like the ingwers uh, that was here on Zoe's uh, for Shadul and Nene has gone straight south on uh, Zoe's road, the same as the Mafazin Gala and Konzos. So just letting the guys know that all the tracks have gone straight south down this road. So pointless, uh, no point in going to go and follow up on her uh, there if they all gone down this way. Part is all resting here yeah, now, so they're all relaxed. Um, all down this side, yeah. Yes, it is Saturday, it is Saturday, cat today, cat today, set today. Well, we're nice to see if we can get some cats this morning. Well, I think yesterday was uh, feline Friday for sure. Come on, kitty cat. Our only problem about these tracks now, we're going down Zoe's and uh, we're coming to the south. Uh, uh, we're coming to the southern side of uh, of uh, Juma now, and uh, uh, well, the southwestern corner of Juma. And I think following this side here now, I'm going to go straight into Hoffman's, into another property. Uh, still got their tracks here, all over here. 
all going that way. Heading in that direction. I said I'm not too sure exactly which female this would be because it's just it's just for one female line. Just for one. Uh, so he's still going straight south him. as we're coming up this road checking for tracks mm. although we do know the lions headed this way so I'm not surprised there are lion tracks in the road but what I really want to find out is if there's any tracks of a male and female pair as well I'm not sure who those lions were I have no idea um, but they were seen in an area called Spaghetti Junction which is where all of the roads sort of come together <laughs> oh Benjamin that would be fantastic wouldn't it I'd love to find a lion especially in this early morning and then it starts to roar like that oh man that would be fantastic got to keep our ears open for that as well make sure that we are listening out We were actually chatting yesterday about lions roaring and that feeling when you're right next to them it really is indescribable it's very hard to to explain to someone unless they've experienced it themselves I must say driving this morning is I mean there's just it's so beautiful I've got the silhouettes of some of these um, dead trees, we've got the mist up ahead, we've got the sunrise on the left, oh, magic. Oh, 
are some tiny little Janet tracks as well in the road. Janet tracks are about the size of the of my thumbnail and they can fit underneath your thumb which is quite cool. In comparison to a big male lion it probably is smaller than one of their toes. Sure, you can actually see the mist there and goes up. It's like nothing below. It's quite cool. But a lot of lion dynamics happening at the moment. I was chatting to Cedric. And yeah, there's these young black dam males, there's the other males as well. Um, so lots of, I don't know, things happening. Um, I have, I would love to meet her. Um, I don't know if we'll actually make it to the wall. Well, at this point in time, at the moment. But um, Chella would be amazing. I'd love her. All right, well, we are going to carry on down this road, see if there are any more signs of these lions, and you are going to head over to Cedric. All right, thanks, Amy. Oh, there's lion tracks everywhere on the southern side here. Okay, I'm just going to jump off here and show you quickly. I'm making sure that there is no lions here, first of all. <laughs> it'll be the last thing I'll have a Steve O oh, my word moment yeah but you can see hmm, got some male some male lions yeah there's also had some female lion tracks in the center yeah and all going pretty much in an easterly direction slowly yeah all in an easterly direction just want to yeah, straight down yeah looks like heading towards twin dam sides so I think I'm gonna quickly go around towards twin dams we're going to take a look there. Let's see if we can pick up on, uh, on that. Mm, a lot of lion activity. This is some males, a few males here. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly which lions has decided to come down into this area. Earth lover, yes, sir. Oh, and it's a beautiful morning. It's a lovely morning. It's nice just to see all these tracks around. Yeah, that's what I love about the morning. It's almost like, you know, it's everything so fresh. You can just kind of try and work out exactly what's been happening during the night time. There's like a story on the on the road. There's like a story here. So yeah, it's always nice to follow up on this. All right, let's quickly go a little bit further on. Tracks are all going along here. Uh, There's quite a few, two or three male line tracks here. You can still see them there. Uh, still in the center yeah. Still in the center. In the center, in the center. Oh. It's still, it's still yeah, on the road. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep my eyes on these tracks and I don't want to miss, miss them if they do turn off somewhere. I don't want to keep my eyes on the road, yeah. On these tracks. I say Twin Dams. I've got a feeling Twin Dams is going to be our, our winner, yeah. Happy Brit, you say you got your... Oh, I, I, I didn't, yeah, I just didn't copy you. Uh... Sorry, Happy Brit, we did not copy what Jordan said there. Oh, Happy Brit, you got your comfy spot on, uh, on the sofa and you're ready for... A good old Saturday morning safari. Yes, on the world's largest safari vehicle. Boom, shakalaka, here we are. And let's see if we can find 
find these uh, cats for cat today. I feel that we are very close to them. Very, very close. I just got this feeling. I mean, oh, look at that. It's even the beautiful light that's coming through here. Still going along here. Still going along. What do you think, Panda? Twin dams, eh? Uh, I say twin dams, eh? I'm putting, uh, putting my Saturday morning bet on that, eh? Yeah, the veggie veggie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're passing uh, Weaver's Nest now. This is Weaver's Nest Junction that goes straight towards Treehouse Dam area. We're passing that, see if they're going to continue. As long as they don't go south. See, if they go south, then it's a problemo. Uh, it's all going here. It's still on the road. Because we do not reversing into Little Gowry, of course. And if they go this way, they'll be bye bye. So stay a whole lot this side and this side. It's quite a few of them. Oh, and there's back and forth here now. Ah, it's all going that way. So of course, Shadulu and Nene's tracks uh, for the two leopards, they went straight south into Hoffman's. Yeah, they went uh, straight south. So they lost their kill through maybe almost probably hyenas or even that lioness that came past there. Okay, we're coming up to Twin Dams very slowly here. Yeah? Let's see if Twin Dams is going to be our, our winner. Thank you, Darcy Miller. Yes, cat vibes for oh, this morning would be great. It'd be fantastic. Oh, still going. All going straight, yeah. This is one of the coldest places on Juma in winter, is uh, Baboon Pan, Twin Dams. It is, yo, it is cold, yeah. It's, yeah. All the cold air sinks everywhere. I think the, enti the entire South Africa cold air just comes into this little spot here in winter. That's how it feels. It is so cold here in winter time. All right, we have, oh, we have to pass Twin Dams. The tracks are... I can see the tracks there. We've got one track here. It looks like. Oh, we're passing Twin Dams. Yeah. Looks like we're passing Twin Dams. We might go into the Mulawati. Uh. All right. Well, we're going to continue with the, uh, these line tracks. Let's head over to Amy. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to us. I want to show you something important. You can let me know. On this silver cluster leaf tree, if we get close up on the leaves, there's tiny little droplets of water. Um, I don't know if we're going to, or either one on the right, maybe silhouetted against the, the light. Can just show you. There you are, there we go. So those leaves there, this is called a silver cluster leaf tree and named uh, those leaves all clustered together, but also it's got the silver sheen to it in the sunlight. And if we look at the very sort of margin of the leaf, the very edge of it, there's tiny little, it almost looks like it's got little pearls on the edge of it. And um, those are all the condensation, the dew that's uh, formed little water droplets around. We didn't have any rain last night uh, in fact the cloud the sky has been very very clear and it's been very warm um, but at this time of year especially we get a lot of moisture that um, condenses on the vegetation whether it's the grass or all the leaves of the tree um, and what I wanted to 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 mention to everyone is we talk a lot about the importance of water and every animal has different water requirements out here in terms of how much they need to survive and we talk about animals being water dependent or independent and some of the smaller antelope species especially there are some bigger ones but if I think of things like dikers and steenboks for example um, they don't necessarily I don't think I've ever seen any of them coming to a water hole to drink before and um, this is where they get a lot of of, um, of their water needs is from the vegetation that they eat. So 
all over, whether it's not just the silver cluster leaf tree, but actually the 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 grass and, and different vegetation types that they eat, they're able to get a lot of water content from that. And that even includes things like elephants. If they came and took a branch from this tree, they're actually getting a lot of water with it as well. Not a lot, but more than than nothing <laughs> and uh, even things like kudu for example could come and browse here and get water in um, their diet as well so just wanted to show that actually in port just below on the lower branches you can actually see some little water there we go as you scans around there's little water droplets forming on the stem um, on some of the seed pods And so as that, those water droplets condense and um, all sort of group together, they form these larger drops and eventually that's going to become heavy enough to drop down. But it's interesting, often we don't think about the amount of water that animals can get without actually visiting a water hole. Oh, and there's an ant. And there's a little ant that's come out. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, Darcy Miller, I'm so glad it is. I just thought I haven't really seen there was some impala right in the beginning but I haven't seen any other movements even birds are still waking up so let's take a look and the the silhouette of the leaves in the light actually caught my eye with all the tiny little water droplets and now we've got a little ant which would also have some water from from this uh, tree as it goes if it needed it And this is a way that many animals out in much harsher environments such as deserts and things like that actually have adapted in order to survive is in the evening time when the cold air um, sort of condenses over the, the, the desert dunes and that sort of thing, it, it puts little water droplets there which all these specialized little animals can actually get water from which aids them in survival in such harsh climates Grandma, yes, they you know they, even as an ant they would still be getting in moisture. I'm actually just looking what it's doing because it just stopped there. actually be eating I'm not sure now it's sort of sitting up on one of the leaves I'm not sure very interesting um, <clears throat> but I mean if you think of the size of an ant the amount of moisture it needs is really just one little pinprick and it will have enough but definitely, I mean, all over here, insects, that sort of thing, are getting moisture from the environment. And you can see the light coming through there, those little tiny pearls of, of water just to the left of that droplet on that leaf. You can actually see really nicely. Um, how they all collecting and eventually all those the weight of those droplets will fall forward and then you get that one big drop at the end of a leaf sort of that classic picture that we've sometimes seen of the water falling off of the tip of a leaf Back 
Sorry, I was just listening to an update on the radio. Um, Bill, for this particular tree and this particular, and I don't think so, that sort of symbiotic relationship is, is um, particularly for acacia trees with the acacia ant. Um, this, I think, is <clears throat> just an ant that is walking around looking for food and, and that sort of thing on this particular tree. But I will check that, Bill, if there is any sort of ant that has a relationship specifically with the silver cluster leaf. All right. Well, that was very, very cool. Thanks, Mpo. Very cool to see this uh, tree up a little bit closer and show you some of the, the water condensing on it. It is actually quite beautiful in its own way. But I think what we're going to do is continue down this road. Um, I'm still <clears throat> making my way towards... Um, <laughs> making my way towards uh, Spaghetti Junction. And... <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, you say that particular ant is your what? Second cousin, twi third cousin, twice removed, or something. Well, I'll send you. I'll send it your regards. Oh, it's been quiet. I must say, um, we heard a few birds, but I'm still waiting for that sort of dawn chorus to hit. They might just be waiting for the actual sun to come up. It's starting, the very first rays of light are coming through now. can just see the very tops of the trees are starting to get some sunlight. Just making sure I don't miss anything on the radio. I'm also hoping to maybe see some elephants today. It has been a while. I don't think I've... I saw some yesterday morning, of course, but then we had a few issues with um, some of... The power on the vehicle so we didn't get to show them to you for too long but anyway we are going to keep bumbling down here and you are going to head back over to Cedric for an update thank you Amy all right so what's happening here the line tracks that we followed up on uh, on Gary Main that's on the southern side of uh, Juma that was heading east uh, eventually they found the lions and I was responding to them uh, but the lions were on Chitwa, Chitwa uh, but they were going still further east unfortunately they're heading east on a road called Faganya they're heading straight to another property called Cheetah Plains so I could not really continue uh, responding to that uh, sighting because we, we would go out of a signal area and on top of that we do not have traversing rights on uh, Cheetah Plains so I have decided to turn my nose back onto Juma. I'm going up on the eastern boundary towards the firebreak to Biffleshook firebreak. Apparently there's a, a, one of the gentlemen from the maintenance crew. They said they spotted a leopard on the northern boundary of uh, Juma, uh, not too far up from this side. 
So I'm trying to get there and to see if we can get lucky with uh, that leopard. I'm sh uh, it's close to Mvubu Road, so let's see. Let's see if we get time to get to respond there. And that is that so far. It's, uh, oh, so, so there's some very cold patches here this morning. Very, very cold patches around here on Juma this morning. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, let's try and uh, stick to the crest. Oh, there's a line in front of us. There's a line. Oh, he has a line. Hello. Yeah, we've got a line, everybody. We've got a line here. Line, line in the road. Oh, hello, mister. A nice male line. Oh, yes, two. Here's another one. Here's another. Well, we got two. Got two. We got the. Look like the black damn males. Hello, my boys. Yes. Yeah, it's a black. Looks like the black damn males. So, of course, these are the two males that was really like the dominant males of the northern areas. And uh, looks like they. This is the one with the, less of a mane. Oh, no. And then they've got the one that's just down the road that's got the, a nice, decent mane on him. There we go. Catterday, Saturday has started. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. Net Nanny has got a Mohawk man, yes. Sooner or later that Mohawk will disappear and then a nice full man will kind of develop on the sides as well. I don't know if anybody can give me an idea. I know that, as I said again, there was two male lions around about 8 o'clock, 8, half past 8 on Dam Cam last night. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, Clayton. Yeah, just uh, located on two Black Dam, Madod and Gawler here on Chittacut Line Junction with Central. Okay, that's black there. Yeah, one's uh, head up and all that, other one's lying. Uh, they're all both on the road, so it's mostly. Okay, copy. Um, just tell me, should we go and then end the convo? Whereabouts is the convo? 
I speak to Roy on the Eastern Channel. They, they're following up. They went straight over Philemon's Cutline Junction with Gary Main into the Hoffmans. Okay, on the Eastern Channel. AFM, AFM. Sorry about that, everybody. I was just quickly giving them an update on uh, some tracks and locations of uh, animals and all that. So, I just had to let him know. But yeah, they got nice big bellies, of course, having that bigger Niala from yesterday, a Niala bull from yesterday, so nicely fed. You're saying no one's saying anything about the lions on dam cam last night. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Jordan. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll take a look as well. I'll see if I can uh, do a little bit of a, a search and see if we get lucky there. Uh, okay, Cubby. More than welcome. Make your way as a second. Uh, Aubrey, Aubrey, um, yeah, just got two Medora and Gala here on Chitta Cut Line with uh, Central. So if you want to, if, if you want to come this side as well, more than welcome to make your way into this area. So yeah, it's, uh, it looks like uh, I'm trying to see exactly which way they came from. Um, I think they might have come on from Central. It looks like I don't get any tracks here. Oh, there I got their tracks on the road. Yeah, from here. So I think they came just from behind us. There's a road called Central. I'm sure they came cut through Juma and then they popped out onto the eastern boundary. Yeah. So with big bellies like that, they don't really want to move too far. You know, they have a little bit of a stroll, just listening out, picking up on in any other lines. It might be around here. But as I said, the Nkumas went straight east towards uh, Cheetah Plains property, which is quite far from here. Kenny, yes, but we're very far from any pans here. Well, actually, the closest will be Gauri, uh, I mean, Gwari Pan. Um, that's the only one. But I'm sure they had a drink ready. If I'm thinking about where they came from, there's that beautiful pan on Mamba Road, um, like little mud wallow pan uh, effect. And um, I'm sure they kind of had a nice little a drink that side. But luckily it's not too hot. Now, plus walking through the grass, there's a lot of dew on the grass, a lot of dew on the grass. So sometimes when they walk through the grass and all that, it all collects on their paws and on their legs. And sometimes they'll actually lick little dewdrops off their skin and getting them getting moisture like that. Now that's if they struggle to get any water or any pads around here. Beautiful sun, golden sunlight that's just hitting. There's a male lion on the side. And they're still in good condition, these two males. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, I also got that, Jordan. Yeah, I also got, the, I also got the, those messages. Uh, some, uh, uh, someone said it was the black damn males on the, the dam cam, and then some of, uh, yeah, some of the zoomies said it was the Kambula males. So. Yeah, I haven't seen the photos. I haven't, well, I haven't seen the, the the clip of uh, those two males coming down to the dam from last night. But these two are very, it's easy recognizable because you can imagine this one that's got hardly a mane on him. So if you've got two males that's going to be coming down to the dam, if one's got hardly a mane on them, well, then you can say that it's going to be the black dam males because you must remember the Kambula males, all four of them have got nice manes, beautiful manes. None of them have got, uh, um, how can I say, none of them are maneless. But yeah, these two males have gone through a lot of, 
a lot of confrontation, a lot of wars between other males over the last uh, couple of months. I think they've bumped into the Nzenga males and then they've had uh, the issue with the Kambula males and then they got chased off by the Makhle Makhle males about three weeks ago. So yeah, that was, it's been quite, uh, quite a tire, tiresome uh, couple of months for these two males. You can imagine. That's typical. Yeah. Lion warfare is not pretty. You always think, oh, I wish I was a lion. It seems so nice. I can just lie down and sleep all day. But uh, it's not the case. They always have to protect the areas, protect the cubs. Face in. Alison, now they'll just show them that, uh, well, they will, of course, uh, come into the area, start calling, start scent marking, start chasing the females around, eventually even chasing, if there was a dominant male or two in the area, chasing them out, and, uh, you know, eventually the females will start getting, or gaining some confid uh, confidence in, uh, and in the, you know, the males has just uh, made their way into that territory. And it's not a, it's not an overnight thing. It's, it's a little bit of a process. You know, the females aren't just going to say, yes, I'm, uh, you are the new males straight away and uh, let me start mating with you. No, you know, sometimes, you know, they also have to make sure that uh, if they do have cubs with, you know, other males, and if you've got new ones coming in the area, well, they make sure that those dominant males of the area Know that there is intruders and they will try and I said, make their way out and even act like a pride stick together and try and chase the males out from the area not always the case it depends on how big the coalition is I mean if you've got four or five males coming in it's a different story So 50, yes, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space or face? Face, space, face, face. okay. Oh, you've got a beautiful face, yes. Sorry, I was like struggling to get the comms there. I don't know if these males will move too much. Big bellies. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a very hot day today. I'm going to find a nice little shady spot somewhere, go and rest for the day. Unless they want to move somewhere, unless they were on a mission somewhere and they've decided just to stop over here now and have a little bit of a break. Uh, Jill, one of them, uh, a male weigh about, uh, coming like, you know, I'm just saying, a, mine is about 200 kilograms, and a female will be about 140, 150 kgs. About 200 kilograms. That's about three of me. Panda, you? Me. Yeah. But like, a female line will be two of me. A uh, female line will be... Yeah, two of me, I'm 75, yeah, two. But a male? Uh, uh, so it should be like three of you as well. Yeah, you're the same as me. Yeah. Find them myself, we weigh the same. No, I'm 70. Oh, you're 70? Yeah, I'm not 
So well, it's close. Give and take. <laughs> well, Fanda is very, very particular with his uh, with, with his weight, Jay. He's like, I said, I'm not 75, thank you. I am 70. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think Paul would love those extra pounds. <laughs> This is On Safari. <laughs> uh, most probably old James is going to give me a call just now. <laughs> All right, while I wait for that phone call from uh, Jamos, uh, let's head over to Amy. <laughs> Shame, Cedric. <laughs> uh, yeah. They do tend to, there's always one that has a little bit bigger and a little bit more dominant over the other. So, um, he still has their, they both actually still have their mains to fill out. Now, everyone, I have made my way up as quickly as I could towards the northern boundary of Juma and there were reports of a leopard that was seen earlier um, I think by one of the maintenance vehicles so I'm on a road traveling north to south driving very slowly it is so thick here um, there were some uh, tracks on the uh, boundary road but they weren't super fresh there was also some a whole bunch of lion tracks um, but those were much older and so we are just looking carefully because when it comes to a leopard oh my word you can't be too too careful when you're looking out for it I'm also checking the trees 
That would be lovely to see a leopard in a tree. But this is the time when cats are moving and it makes so much sense that we see um, tracks of these animals that they you know move from places they were last night um, even Cedric running into some as he was heading up north so um, yeah interesting 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 stuff just so much cooler for such a big cat like that or a large animal to be moving as the day heats up and it heats up so quickly well, the one thing about this time of year you have a lovely cool morning and um, as soon as the sun rises it hops up about four degrees three or four degrees and very quickly within the next three hours we'll be up to about 27 or so degrees so it all gets very warm very quickly I'm seeing a lot of red-faced mouse birds around it's very difficult to put them on camera but as we're driving they're sort of flying past us But if a leopard was to lie down in this area, I think it would be very difficult to find them. So I'm just listening to an update about this potential sighting of the leopard. nothing further as of yet There was also a bird of prey out earlier, I think it was a black wing kite. So I'm also just checking if there is um, any birds perched. I'd love to see oh, even a tawny eagle, maybe a martial eagle. That would be so beautiful. So I've driven the whole of that road, we're now making our way towards um, a little pan called Gallego Pan. I love that pan, it's probably my favourite on the property. We've had a beautiful elephant sighting there on my last stint here. Go ahead. Good morning, uh, I just want to find out how you unlock the setting where? No, negative. I was just following up. Um, I haven't managed to relocate at this point. Okay, I'll start to move in the area and help you. Um, whereabouts are you now? Um, I'm coming up. I gotta go shortcut uh, back to Ward. Sorry everyone, we're just communicating. There's a lot of people interested in the area. So hold on, it's quite bumpy. Mm. Hello. 
All right, everyone, I'm going to carry on following up on this uh, leopard and you are going to head over to Cedric. Well, as you can see, this beach ball has just uh, swallowed a lion. Or is it the other way around? The lion has swallowed a beach ball. Look at that belly. Oh my word, that is huge. Well, this male lion is giving June, the female hyena, a run for her money. Because you can imagine this male and June walking next to each other now from a kill. <laughs> It'll be two beach balls with four legs. <laughs> oh, this is huge. There's, there's my boy, you had, a, you had a great feed. But look at all the flies. That is heavy days. And I, I, can't, I can't understand that he's not getting irritated by those flies. I mean, it is, it is flies, eh? Yeah, that's a lot of flies. If I'm him, I'll just quickly eat my chest and my belly with my paw and try and chase all those flies off. Wow. Now, the flies are sitting on him like that. I'm sure they're getting a lot of moisture from him there, from the belly. So that's exactly why it's, those flies will sit on their bodies like that. Uh, is he snoring or was he farting there? Is it, is it really yeah, I th well, I think it might be the latter. It was a very strange noise that came there. Now, there you go. He almost swatted those flies away. So, yeah, no, look, a, a lion can easy. Oh, here comes the other one, yeah. yeah. One can easy. They can easy eat about a third of their body weight. So a big male lion of uh, 200 kilograms eating about a third of their body weight. So that is at least maybe 60 to 70 kilograms of, uh, of good old food in those bellies. That's, that's a lot. That's practically the size of me that would be inside his belly. He's coming to lie in the sun. I think he's looking for the sun. Nope. Maybe he's going to come and greet his brother. Always do a little bit of a head rub. I'm not going to call it before it happens. Yeah, that's all right. Exactly. And flop. Quick. Down. There you go. Brotherly love, close to each other. Looking into each other's eyes. No, that one's not full. Clearly, you can see who's got the appetite here. Franny, yeah, no, well, look, the, luckily the other one that I was walking now, the one with the bigger mane, you can see his belly's not that big. He's had food, you know, you can see he's had food, but clearly the <laughs> the one on the right is uh, the one that, uh, I guess, uh, wants to eat more. He's the one that says, listen, yeah, if there is a cake, I want seven-eighths of it, and you can have one-eighth. Oh, oh, he's even got a little stream. Look at that. There we go. He's just watering the grass now. Yeah, so watering the grass, making sure that the grass is nice and green on the side of the road. Doing a little bit of his conservation work for the day. And now he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Chase those flies. It's just, it's making me feel all funny with all those flies on that belly. And 
<laughs> it's like it's like rolling a rock. <laughs> it just tumbles over. Yeah, no, I think he ate too much. Overindulged him, himself on that niada. Yeah, oh, is he going to get up? He's going to try and get up. Well, there's impalas down there. Hopefully, hopefully he's not looking at the impalas and saying, hmm, some more food, because that would be terrible. <laughs> be like, uh, you got a problem. But he's going to get up. Oh, let's see how he's going to walk with that belly. Oof, we can barely turn. But yeah, they're looking in good condition. Not many new scars on them and, or anything like that. So it looks like the boys are they're still looking in very good condition. Yeah. All right, well, that is, uh, that is that for, I'm sure, for the morning with these two males. Got the, they're nice, got a nice uh, soft, sandy area here on the road. Very soft sand, perfect for them. It's nice and cool, the sand. And I don't think they are going to move too far from the side. All right, well, we are going to start moving out from this because I don't think we're going to get more action out of these two males. I'm going to let, uh, let them sleep it off. Um, and while we do that and uh, while we move away, I think uh, let's head over to Amy to see exactly if she has come right with that leopard. So right now, I've just been on the radio as well with two other vehicles that are in the area checking um, for this leopard. It was seen uh, earlier on, which is always a good thing, which means it's in the area for sure. 
but we're all just driving different roads also just checking for tracks because that tells us if um, the leopard has moved or crossed a road or has entered a new block so that's also really important on such a small road though it is a bit tricky to check That is the same condo where she was coming from and find a big marula tree. Yeah, I think she was coming from the east to the west. Does yeah, sound like it is a female leopard that was seen? Just gonna move this branch up the road, everyone. As much as I'd like to think I can drive over it, I'd prefer not to. Uh, uh, work of some elephants eating on this false marula. did actually see some elephants as well so if we do cover the area and we don't see any signs of her I'll head back towards Galago Pan and hopefully catch up with those elephants but I didn't want to waste any time doing that when there's a chance we may find this leopard she was in a marula tree I think when she was first seen and then she hopped down and headed west along the fire break and no one has seen her since I might actually get onto that fire break and just drive it all the way to our boundary um, just to make sure that she hasn't just walked all the way and if she did cross over then at least We've got confirmation with tracks or whatever that she's um, off the property if she did continue that way. There's a bit of scat in the road there, but old though. Scat is a term that we refer to for cat droppings and we talk about dung when it, we refer to herbivores. Alright, so while we continue our search, you are going to have a look at a clip about leopards and how elusive they are. The keys to a solitary leopard survival are territory, food and mating rights. The scent of buttered popcorn marks their territorial boundaries. With its borders secure, the leopard looks to satisfy its hunger. A perfectly adept predator, the leopard uses its camouflage to capitalize on its immediate habitat. Superb eyes detect the slightest of movement. Sensitive ears discern the softest footfall. Dagger canines throttle prey while razor claws tear and grip. Powerful shoulders and neck muscles allow leopards to hide their kills in trees away from the other predators. If they can, they'll hoist their kills into the safety of a nearby tree's branches. If a kill is left on the ground, thieves are never far off. But trees are not only a good pantry, they are crucial for safety. Wild dogs, hyenas and lions will kill leopards without a second thought. 
This spotted cat's climbing skills are vital to its survival and predatory success. Well, it is so true, everything that you've just heard. And leopards are amazing animals and they have so many um, incredible skills and um, ways of, of adapting to their life which has made them an amazingly successful species and they really can live in all sorts of different habitats from one extreme to another uh, and all those senses and things like that have also helped them to be able to do that successfully we are on the fire break now um, which is basically a half a road <laughs> it's a road but it's not a, a maintained road um, just to see if there's any signs of this female leopard Excuse me. Um, she was last seen heading in this direction. <laughs> Lucky leopard socks. That sounds amazing, Grad. I'd love to know what those look like, actually. Lucky leopard socks. Well, this Saturday today. Hey, Mpo. Saturday, cat today, I believe. And uh, at least we've seen some lions. I was hoping we could maybe see a leopard. Just listening to an update here. Oh, interesting. Okay, we were just listening there. Sorry, everybody. Um, but right now, everyone is still searching. So uh, you can go check in with Cedric on his bumble. Well, good luck, uh, Jamie. I hope they do find uh, that female leopard. Might be either. I've got a feeling Tlalamba, Tlalamba or Kara. So, could be either one of them. I've got about, I think, more like uh, Tlalamba. That area is Tlalamba's territory. So. Okay, we just passed Bifflesuk Dam, just coming along the fire break here. Just coming to just take a look around here quickly. Just want to double check here. Uh, yo, Jordan, I think the last time we saw Kara was when I was with Cameron. When I first thought it was Tlalamba walking down the road on Bifflesuk. And it was just after Marip's uh, uh, mated with uh, Kara. I think that was about maybe four or five days after we heard about Marip's mating with Kara. So, so well, that's about, well, that's two months ago. I think it's just over two months ago. As I said, I'm just doing the northern side here, yeah, just double checking him. Yeah? I might end up going back towards Bifflesuk Dam. 
As I said, for my reps, a quickly update once again. I'm just waiting for uh, Sabi Sands to let me know exactly uh, what was the outcome of uh, last night with waking him up and all that. So, because that, uh, as I say, that becomes a little bit of a tricky situation sometimes. You know, waking up uh, an animal that's gone, uh, you know, that's been tranquilized. But I will keep you posted on that. This morning we did have some lions. Cedric's probably going to fall that one. Morning is uh, warming up very nicely, so I think I'm gonna I'll be needing to take my jacket off very, very soon. Sounds like they got uh, maybe the leopardo. Looks like they might have uh, located the leopardo. Ah, so it's Tlalamba. Hopefully, it, hopefully Amy can get there. I don't think she's too far. That's. That's correct, uh, Jordan, and as I just uh, updated, I uh, have located the leopard. Yeah, 
Okay, so if you please, uh, Amy can go start her cat today today with uh, a leopard. Ah. All right, so talking about Lalamba, and I've been talking about Lalamba, I think let's go take a look at a, a beautiful a clip about that leopardess, and then you'll know exactly who she is. Columba is a leopardess in her prime. She is Queen of Juma, daughter to Tandi and the late Duke Tingana. Her name means mischievous and playful. For the guides at Juma, Tlalamba is a tricky customer to keep up with, retaining her playfulness despite her maturity. She is always on the move, much more so than other leopards. Even on the hottest of days, she will frequently move big distances on the hunt or marking her territory. But she's loving it. You can see she's even like cleaning her paw. Oh, eating the whole side of the head, so the cheek, the eye. Uh, it looks very much like a, a horror scene. Well, guess what? <laughs> I just thought of coming in here and we've got Marips. As you can see, this is a very, very good sign of uh, this young male leopard that he is busy feeding on his uh, kill here in the tree. Of course, walking a little bit uh, gingery. Oop, almost, don't fall off. Look at that. You can see how, the, how it's been nicely sewed up on the right-hand side there. Absolutely amazing. Hey, what a brilliant job compared to what it was yesterday, everybody. But yeah, of course he's going to be sore now. You know, he's not going to be the happiest person. He's not going to be the happiest cat at the moment. Oh, here he comes down now. Now you'll see on the left-hand side now, when he comes down, they, haven't, they did not uh, sew up or stitch up the left-hand side of his body. Um, the reason for that, just to give him a little bit of more mobility so it doesn't kind of pull too tight. And uh, because the left-hand side is not as bad as the right. Um, so, but this is a fantastic sign that at least we see that he is up here in the tree. He's eating and, well, it all works out. This is brilliant. Carla B, yes, very happy to see him up and about. Uh, I am so chuffed. I think he might want to come down. So we're going to just uh, stick with us a little bit, uh, Jordan. Uh, I'm sure he wants to come down and at least we can see. You know, just his mobility. But as I say, I can imagine he was under 
and a lot of medication last night or yesterday afternoon. Elephants shouting in the background there. Well, everybody, this is a very positive thing. See, look at this. So I give and take now, give him another four or five days. Another four or five days and I'm, I tell you, he is going to be hunky-dory again. You know, he's going to start moving again. Um, they have put another impala in the tree for him because they had to do that. Unfortunately, you know, they rather want to make sure that he is going to have some food in his belly for the next few days while he recovers. Okay, here he comes down now. Let's see, where is he going to go back for more? Let's see, go back. So we're not going to stay here for too long. I just wanted to come and take a look where he was. Yeah, no, he's eating good sign. He's got a full belly. Um, he's climbed up, a on, up in, into a tree as well, so he can climb a tree. So, you know, there's, there's just positives. There's not even a negative here. There's just positives. So, once again, a huge thank you to Wildscape for Veterinary Service. Thank you once again to Margot Regger from uh, Remembering uh, Leopards for sponsoring all the medication and, uh, of course, sponsoring all the fuel for all the vets to get through to the side and for the helicopter to come through as well. So, yeah, a huge thank you to everybody. And once again, as well, to the, the Sobby Sand. And that's what it's about, you know. That's why I think these kind of things like Wild Earth is so, so important, you know, just to keep you updated on things like this, just to let you understand and get a better understanding on how things work in these private reserves you know, and, uh, and what we do go and how far we go with our... Uh, efforts to make sure that uh, the animals are kept safe and healthy, you know, if it's anything that's been human caused. So, and there's a perfect example. Teamwork, you know, in this area was just magnificent, absolutely, absolutely magnificent yesterday. Yeah, and those teachers are all holding very nicely on that side. Don't fall out now. You can see he's going to be, he's going to come down very slowly. He's not going to be as agile at all. And you can see just that left side, still a little bit open, but that's exactly what they wanted. So you can just, that's just get that little bit of mobility for him climbing up into a tree this now. Hey, my boy. Hey, my boy. I'm so happy. Try and come down. You'll see there's another impala there at that fork there, the one that they put up there yesterday or last night. Okay, hopefully he doesn't fall out here now. As I say, he's coming down very tentative. Oh, look at the agility, it's amazing. He's got this one now. He's very happy with this impala. Well, he's trying to pull it now. So he's trying to... Oh, he can't see her. Wonder. <laughs> he's trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to get this impala out of the tree? Is it going to happen? No, well, maybe I must just... Uh, he wants to climb up again. Now, all this kind of movement, you know, climbing back and forth, going up into the tree, it's all helping him. It's just strengthening his muscles again. Very important. It's like you're going to gym. 
you know, or going to like rehabilitation place where if you need your, you know, your legs to start working again or your shoulder or something like that. Well, that impala is very, very much stuck in that fork there. You'll make a plan. Look at that. Hello, my boys. Hey, isn't it? And you can just see it. It feels like he's just got this, how can I say, a little bit more of a positive body, uh, how can I say, vibe about him. Not like this all slinky and slinking away and all that. It just seems he's a little bit more vibrant this morning. He's got this energy again. Look at that amazing agility of a leopard. And a good part for him to get to is nice internal organs. Maybe to him try and open it up and get to the heart and all that. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
<laughs> Jorovko, yeah, it's also making, it's, there, it's definitely making my heart sing. I, you know, after this, now just coming into the sighting and looking like him now, there, this is him, this is my ribs, you know. Uh, I'm just, oh, have his little tongue sticking out, typical my ribs tongue. Eh? <laughs> And this young male always got his little tongue sticking out. I just feel like getting out and going help, helping him there, hey, hey Panda. Oof, but he's dragging it. Well, he can try and drag it that way. It might help, because I think the horns is blocking it from this side. So you can actually really fall out, fall out of the tree, you know, on the opposite side of the tree and that. So I think that's why he's trying to drag it back through the, through the fork here. Don't fall, don't fall. You can see he's still... <laughs> Luckily it's not too much of a long drop. I think he's got to go down and rest a bit. I think that'll be a best, a good idea. I'd rather go down, my boy. I'd rather go and rest a little bit longer. There we go. He's on the ground. <sighs> this is brilliant. All right, so we're going to start making our way out. So we're going to leave him for a bit, you know, let him let him do his thing. He wants to go back up again. <laughs> He's going. <laughs> He's actually going. Uh, uh, no, he wants to try and get that impala out there, but it's it's not happening. All right, uh, Jordan, yeah, we're just going to make our way out. Just letting Jordan. All right, well, we're going to make our way out from here and leave him, let him be. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to see him. Let's head over to Amy and to see if she's come right with that leopardess. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are on a leopard hunt at the moment. We saw... Miss Salamba and briefly and she is on the move she is doing a territorial patrol and I'm just uh, in comms at the moment with Aubrey and he's gonna guide me into where she has actually gone uh, she's sitting still at the moment <laughs> So, as well, I've just got my ear to the radio, so just bear with me, everybody. I'm really hoping that we can work to get her on camera for you all. But it was lovely to see her. Uh, she walked across the road in front of us, and she was scent marking and doing her thing. Copy that, I'm reversing now. Sorry, import.
Obi, will I see your off-roading tracks? Yeah, I try for that. Uh, otherwise, just look your own tracks. But yeah, of course, I'm worried about you all people. But yeah, take my tracks and towards the walking Sorry everybody, I'm just coordinating with uh, Aubrey here. I'm thinking these are his tracks. So we're just gonna go off. He's not far off the road. Aubrey, how far off uh, from this Leila are you? Yeah, I'm not far, maybe 150 meters east. There is a nice uh, green tree where you move uh, close to the drainage line. I'm on the east of that, on the northern side of the uh, drainage. Okay, copy. Yeah, I think I see this tree here. Okay, I'm going to make my way in. Okay. Go, go private. All right, everyone, we are going to go try and find this vehicle and also try and find Ms. Lalamba. It's quite exciting. Are you crossing over to Buffalo? It's quite an open area, so not too bad. I'm just going to keep going slowly. There, I see the vehicle. There's also a spider coming up here. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a stick, <laughs> just wait, <sighs> to just, there we go. Alright, just bear with us everyone, we are going to get there. Aubrey, I've got your visual. I'm making my way in. I've got your tracks here. Exciting! Uh, How lovely will it be to add the lumber to cat today? everyone get ready Sorry everyone, that was just a little bit of a, I think a branch. Am I okay? I'm tired. Okay. All right, um, Jordan, if you can just give us a second here, please. We're just gonna try and relocate. So we've just got her tail and paw there, everyone. Um, and while we try and get a better position, you are going to head over to Cedric.
is on safari. Well, so I'll can I give you a hand there. Do you know who, which ingwe is, eh? Ooh, copy, thank you. Yep, so there's Tortoise Pan and Tiani. I want to go and take a look. You ought to see Tiani. That is going to be amazing. But that's if we can find them. So that's if we get the chance to get going. This is so nice just to watch and sit back and watch these elephants. All right, well, we're going to try and slowly head over towards uh, Tortoise Pan and Tiani, see if we can relocate on them, which would be fantastic. I think let's go and take a look at a, an amazing clip all about elephants and their family structures. Elephants have fascinated us for so long because they display the same social complexities and full emotional range of our own human species. Mothers, sisters, cousins and aunts live in herds while the bulls wander the wilderness as bachelors. Cows live in the same herd from birth until the end of their life some 60 years later. The herd is led by the oldest and wisest female, the matriarch. She's not only responsible for leading the herd, but also dishing our discipline to the often unruly teenagers. With their flappy ears, floppy trunks and folded skin, baby elephants have the cuteness edge over their human counterparts. Like toddlers, they are playful, curious and love rolling about in the dirt.
human voices and vehicles provide endless entertainment for bored little elephants, and they, in turn, are always a source of amusement for us. Exploring is the main source of calf entertainment, but it's a scary and sometimes prickly world out there. And Mum is thankfully never far off. Bulls become boisterous when they hit puberty, and this irritates the matriarch. Once she's had enough, she will boo them out of the herd to find their own way in the world. Like playground bullies, the young males fight for dominance, sometimes with extreme violence. The older bulls live alone but mentor these young bucks. It is these fellows that are the ultimate gentlemen of the wilderness. Welcome back everyone, sorry about sending you away there, but we just needed to sort out our positioning. And here we have, who I believe is Thalamba sleeping in this beautiful tree. Hooray! It has been a wild morning, driving back and forth and all over the show. But um, we worked together with two other vehicles to eventually track her down. And like I said, she was on a mission. So we actually decided to you know, loop around to see if we could see her um, cross the road. And then I heard from Aubrey that she had gone up this tree just off the road. And um, here we are. Hi Elaine, there we go. I'm so happy that we could show her to you. I'm sure many of you are very, very happy to see this lovely lady this morning. Queen of Juma, I believe. <laughs> Norma, I'm sure she's very happy that you are all enjoying her as well. Sorry everyone, the flies are crazy. <laughs> you hear any swatting? It's definitely me. But she's been busy, 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 busy this morning. She was seen on the move doing her territorial markings and now she's just having a bit of a rest as it's getting hotter and it is getting hotter. Oh. oh she is a gorgeous girl. Thank <laughs> you. 
do apologize for the branch but unfortunately we're not able to move anyway so this is hopefully she'll put her head down again and we can have her looking at us there we go she's peeping out Linda, yes, absolutely. She looks really, really good. Very healthy, like she's doing very well. Don't know, apparently there were signs of suckle marks and that sort of thing, but I will also have a look if I do get a chance to see her belly. If there's anything going on there. Joshua, you say sleepy queen. Yes, indeed. She is really having a, um, a good rest this morning. <laughs> nice to have her in one spot. My word, there was no way we were going to be able to keep up with her. She's looking very happy and content. I think she's doing well for herself. I don't know when last she had a meal, but she's looking healthy and good. So hopefully we'll be able to spend some time with her now. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna wait here. We've got her on camera, and then we'll we'll have to sort it out. I've got the jack, so thank you. Hey, firm. Oh, sorry, sorry, see this.
sometimes it's just so lovely to spend time in the presence of an animal like this and just enjoy looking at her. Sure. If Lilama does have cubs, oh, she could leave them alone oh, for, oh, it really does depend, I mean, in the beginning she won't leave them for alone, alone for very long, but she might have to leave for a day, go and hunt, um, if she's successful then she'll come back, but she has to suckle them quite regularly, especially when they're smaller, so a few hours at a time maybe, um, she'll head off and hunt and then try and you know when they're a bit older then she'll head off come and fetch them take them to where the kill is that sort of thing i don't sort of know what the maximum time uh, a leopard would leave their their cubs for but it can't be days on end i mean they wouldn't survive the longer she's away the more vulnerable they would be without the mother there So maybe when, when leopards are young, when they haven't got as much experience, they can make mistakes like that, leaving their cubs alone for too long. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. 17 years of achievements, close encounters, and special memories. He's got it, he's got it, and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. There's any signs on her belly of anything? Oh my girl! 
The belly does look very saggy. I'm all worried and poor. Look how she's sitting. <laughs> That is amazing! Oh, it does look like that belly is quite plump. Possibly suckle marks there. Nothing wet at the moment though, but there is a bit of, of wet on her legs just from walking. But how amazing! I think she's definitely, if she hasn't given birth, she's definitely pregnant. I mean, that belly's very plump and not in a plump way like when they eat too much. Plump in the way like there's something in there. I mean, she's very clever. She's basically formed a chair. Glenda, yes, it does seem like she's now showing off, showing how clever she is, making a chair for herself. I've never seen a, a leopard sit like this before. It must be quite comfortable. <laughs> Darcy Miller, absolutely. Absolutely. It's quite a thin branch, I must say. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable that actually is, but Dark Mane Lover, you say the Queen's making you sleepy. She does look very relaxed there and looks like she's created a very comfortable spot for herself, I think. Very innovative would be the word I would use. might be an elephant around. I'm not sure quite far off but there's every now and again a little crack of a branch. But I don't hear anything else. There's a woodpecker, black coloured barbet, there's a few birds calling as well in the background which is lovely.
well, we are going to sit here with Miss Lalamba and you are going to head over to Cedric for an update. Oh, sorry, Amy, about the flat tire. Oh, <laughs> I do feel so bad. Anyway, so I'm here on Triple M. <laughs> Triple M, one of the service roads. We just had some elephants crossing here into Simombili. Still trying to follow up on the mating leopards. Uh, we actually, I heard something in the block here just now. So we are just going to pop here now and just listen out. It's always the best way to live, find mating leopards is by the noises because they always they make every like five to ten minutes and you'll hear that and that you'll hear that so we're gonna just listen out for a little bit let me go a little bit forward at least we can get an elephant in frame let's go a bit forward sorry we gotta go a little bit forward they hear somewhere the leopards that's it that is Hello. All oh, these elephants enjoying a good old morning feed around here. Oh, there's nothing like having some elephants this morning. Always good. The thing about the elephants pushing through here. Yeah. That could be the only problem with the mating leopards. They might have then pushed a little bit further east into Juma. So we'll continue searching. Only young stay in the background there. Not like you young, not a young calf. Maybe like a good old five, six year old. A younger female, a young, like a young female that's in the foreground. And enjoying the cluster leaves. Usually cluster leaves, a lot of the animals tend to rather, rather avoid feeding on cluster leaves. It's very high in tannin. They'll rather break maybe the branch like this one. There we go. And then erode it in their mouths and take off all the bark. Maybe did he hear teeth? I just heard some funny teet teet noises in my ear. Elizabeth, yes, nice having it all, Ellis. Uh, nice heard. A few of them that's already come, actually went past us here now in front. They've already gone into Simongili. I think there's still one or two that's still on Juma's side. Of, Maybe you'll see them coming through, but I doubt it. Looks like the one might come behind the vehicle. Ah, oh, nice this morning. We've got the Queen of Juma of Tlalamba. We've got the Prince of uh, Juma, Marips. Ooh, there's a big one coming. Let me just go. Sorry, I'm going to go back here, Panda. So there's a big male coming behind us. A huge male. He's in full must. Uh. Yeah, sorry, I'm just going to give this guy a little bit of space. Let him come past. All right. Okay. Let's just go back. You'll see he's coming here now. A female there yeah, and then a big male in must that's just behind this female as you can see him towering above this female stand by no not yet I went to virtual access I'm here on triple M sorry I'm just live here with uh, uh, Shlamin Dlov um, but yeah nothing so far from our side Mm, let's see, he's going to try and chase this female around. I'm just gonna... So when a male in is in must, like this big male, now what means must is when the male wants to mate with a female, he's ready to look for a female that's in heat, and then they testosterone 
It was very high and they get very agitated with everything. So you always want to give them some space. And sometimes they annoy quite a few of the members in the herds here. Why oh, are you coming to me now? Yeah, go that way. He's looking for another elephant that's there. Maybe another female. He's sniffing. And you just see behind it, uh, like on the inside of his back legs, all wet and dribbling with urine. Okay, let me go a bit back. Uh, uh, Sorry. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. in a great spot there. Oh, fly just went up my nose. <laughs> and Paul's putting on his buff. He's tired of the flies now. <laughs> and I think the sun, the sun is getting very warm as well. There's not a lot of shade around here. Cedric found those leopards, my word, it um, would be quite something to be able to see that, it's always special. don't know when last there were mating leopards on wild earth, it would be very very cool to see. I think it's, it's, it's not just that it's mating animals but that it's two, you know, we had Shadula and Nene um, and you sort of know how, how difficult it is to find these animals and then you've got two together and it just is that much more um, exciting and, and riveting.
It's definitely an elephant feeding here just on our right hand side. I don't think you'll be able to hear um, at all, but it is just faintly. I can hear the grass being pulled up. There's a drainage line that runs just to the right of this big tree. And I think it's just on the far side of that. Alright everyone, well coming up next week is not only Earth Day on Monday but Earth Week throughout the week and we'll be sharing some special clips that are um, special for Earth Week and we hope that you are going to enjoy those throughout the sunrise and sunset safari. Also just to let you all know that on Monday and Tuesday in honor of Earth Week we will be having live sunset safaris on Monday and Tuesday. So I'll repeat that, live sunset and uh, sunset drives on Monday and Tuesday. So for sunrise, we'll still be doing virtual safari, but for the afternoons, we will be going live with you all in honor of Earth Day. It's so actually a very good question. Um, they don't have as big a tulip. I think, I mean, Shudulu yesterday, 10 year old leopard, I could definitely see a bit of skin underneath her neck um, that was loose, but it's nowhere near the size of, of a big mature male leopard like we see on, the, we used to see on the likes of Tangana and then also um, Tortoise Pan has a has a nice dewlap um, in pictures I've seen, I haven't met him yet. Um, but it, it, it's just their, their size, um, a lot to do with um, being a male and that skin sort of develops and, and starts to flap underneath the neck. It's the same with even buffalo bulls, um, ear lines, kudus, they all have sort of this extra skin. And female ear lines actually have it as well, but for the males it's a lot larger and a lot more prominent. And it's just flappy skin really. Um, and yeah, I think it's just the size of the leopard. The skin obviously grows as the leopard matures and there's a lot of it that sags under the neck. And for males, it's far more prominent um, in male leopards than it is in female leopards.
try as me either. This is the first that Lalam is doing an amazing job of making that look like the most comfortable spot ever. Very clever girl. <laughs> yeah, I freaking sense it. She is indeed. Although I think she's enjoying the view behind her eyelids at the moment. Alright, well, as we continue to watch La Lama Rest, you're going to have a look at a virtual safari cup with James and Panda. Oh. <laughs> Our elephants have come down for a drink. Lovely, calm scene here at the dam and there's nothing like uh, relieving yourself into your bath and your drinking hole especially if you've already drunk from it and there are others who still have to come and have a drink it is so peaceful here the sun just beginning to set Now here comes the rest of the herd, see if they'll also have a drink in the now befouled water. Let's face it, this water was befouled long before that elephant decided to relieve itself there. It has been befouled by hippos, by birds, by monitor lizards, lots of elephants, fish and countless other creatures. Right, I heard growling. I just heard growling. Yeah, I heard growling. I heard growling. I heard growling. I heard growling. Did you hear that, uh, Panda? I heard growling. Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to look for these mating leopards and I just heard growling. Just here. Yeah. I heard growling. Oh, they, 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 they. Oh. oh, they're busy mating, they're busy mating. Come on, go, Cedric. Get in there. Get in there, get in there. Panda, we're gonna get it. We have to get it. Don't know how we're gonna get it. It's uh, very thick in here. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh, there, 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 there. Okay. Um, all right. We just see the tail busy swishing here of the leopard. Of course, that's its Tiani and tortoise pan. All right. All right, so we're just gonna, yeah, as we stopped. Uh, you're good, man. <laughs> so mating happens with, between male and female. Uh, happens, as I say, every five to ten minutes. But let's listen to her. She's, she's usually the one that instigates it. This is Tiani now, this female that's coming towards us. So, Tiani, we haven't really seen much of. I think she's been seen once. She comes from the west. So she's not, this is not a part of her territory. So what happens is the female will usually move out of their territory um, following a male. And uh, because she wants to mate and that happens for like five days. And now she's come all the way from Elephant Plains area, from Robson's area. And she's come all the way through like, uh, Shadulu's uh, territory, oh, she's in Shadulu's territory at this point in time and so she's come directly here into Juma and she's just going to follow Tortoise Pan so if he continues moving and he continues going east uh, deeper into his territory or to the furthest eastern area of his territory you'll find that uh, she's just going to follow and follow and follow for five days and um, I just spoke to another gentleman now and apparently they are on their second day of mating. So this is the second day of mating now. Yes. <laughs> now Tiani is also very special to me now because I've seen Tiani when she was uh, a, a youngster and her mom, um, she was, I got to see her mom so often, or Salaheshe. And Salaheshe was uh, a very well-known female uh, yeah, in the Northern Sabi Sands and um, I mean, she had uh, Nsele, I mean, if you remember Nsele, and uh, she had a male with Nsele's brother called Rulani. Unfortunately, Nsele did pass away, or she, she disappeared in pretty much early times of uh, 2022. So Tiani is around about, uh, well, she was, I think it was 2015. I was at Arethusa when she was born. So I saw her when she was a small cub. She was 2015. So that makes her around about, you know, she's about nine years old now. Beautiful eyes, exactly. And Panda's telling me now, she's, and it is, Tiani's eyes are stunning. She's got these blue light eyes, light, light eyes. Rachel Barry, yes, beautiful female, the same. Um, as I said, last time I saw Tiani, or last time I saw this female was 2015, 2016. 2016 was the last time I saw this female. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
I'm not too sure if Tiani, I can't remember. I think Tiani had a sibling. I can't remember if she had a sibling, but uh, I think that uh, little mate might have died not too long after birth. She was born under one of the decks, I think, of Elephant Plains or Simambili. Yeah, she was born under one of the largest decks. Yeah, resting for a bit, but you'll see she's going to get that little urge of, well, I need to start copulating again. No, Cecile, no, it's not... Uh, well, yes, okay, if it comes from the father, yes, Tingana. I mean, uh, Tingana is pretty much the father of uh, Tlalamba and father of uh, Tiani. So, yes, they've got the fa uh, same father. Let's say that, okay? Yeah. Half, uh, half sister. There's genes, of course. Got this, uh, pretty much a similar genes there. In a way, different mothers. Of course, uh, Tlalamba's mom is uh, Tandi, and uh, Tiani's mom is Salaheshe. So hopefully, this, uh, hopefully they continue coming further in east. Maybe head a little bit deeper into Juma, which would be very nice. Well, yeah, on the western side of Juma, of course. But uh, you know, maybe this afternoon, get some more mating leopards, which would be wonderful. And I mean, even if uh, Tortoisepan, the male leopard, yeah, now Tortoisepan, you know, he, he's going to go further to his uh, most uh, eastern boundary of his territory, and if he does that. You might even end up all the way towards Zoe's. Even if he goes on to Zoe's, you'll find even Tiani. Tiani will follow him all the way towards Zoe's. That's another road that's a little bit further deeper into Juma. And then he'll go south and she'll just follow south as well. And it's the same as we found Lunga the other time with the tortoise pan. Pretty much here in the same area, right here. I'll just have to call this in now quickly. So apologies, I can forgot. Uh, stations, I've just got the Fagabagat Ingwe here yeah, on uh, just south of Riotilla Access. So actually just uh, more west of uh, Impala Road, um, quite far south of Riotilla Access in, in, uh, in uh, Schlatin. Just myself on lock. She's going to get the urge here now. She's like, okay, it's time to go and wake Tortoise Pan up. I don't know how used... I don't think she's too used to a, a wild earth vehicle. She's like, what is this funny vehicle with this white tail? It's standing upright at the back of the vehicle, yeah. He's going to jump up for him now. And one of her daughters, Laluca, oh, she's also got beautiful light eyes. And I remember Panda was with me the day we found Laluca. Mm. Clint, we, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think our cat sightings over the last few days has been absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, I can't, I don't even know where to look now. It's just, it's lions this morning, leopards. Well, uh, Amy has got a leopard. It's just been phenomenal. It's been br brilliant. 
And that's what it's about. Uh, we, it's, it's always nice to watch these characters and what they, you know, what they get up to uh, from day to day. And like a character like this, like Tiani now, all of a sudden we don't see her at all. And it's nice just to, we hear about her, but we don't see her. And it's nice now to have her on Juma, have her on Wild Earth. <laughs> she almost like, come here. Yeah. <laughs> she almost used a paw like, come here. Yeah, she's gonna get up now. She's gonna like, it's time. We're just going to listen out. Unfortunately, I can't reposition here. But let's listen to them. Tucked away here in uh, a Tamboti thickets here. All right, I don't think we're going to get to see them much more here now, or for now. Uh, we try and reposition. Just letting Jordan know. Looks like they're going around. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can get around to this side. We might get a good spot here. Yeah, you know what? We might get a good spot here. Let's try. Oh, all right, here they come, yeah. All right, here we are. Now you'll see that uh, a male leopard is twice the size of a female. Oh, no, don't go that way, daughter Span. You must come this way, come to Tiani. She's gonna follow him. Right, let's go a little bit forward, yeah. At least as long as we fancy playing safari snaps or showing off your photo skills in fun competitions how about sneak peeks of our brand new camera spots and live chats with fellow africam fans well africam all access has got your back just head to africam's youtube channel hit the join button and select africam all access you'll unlock africam premium website perks and all the vip benefits of our youtube memberships
Torture Span. I think Torture Span is still. I mean, Torture Span is still young. He's. Uh, I think he's only coming on to eight years old now, if I'm not mistaken. Torture Span is yes, oh, about eight years old. So he's coming on to eight years old. So just over seven, coming to eight. Oh, we only got three minutes left. Oh my word. I did not even know that. That went quick. Oh, this morning flew by. That is... Wow. Well, we'll definitely follow up on... Uh, the, um, we'll follow up on uh, these mating uh, leopards uh, this afternoon. And follow up on them. Follow up on the black tail male lions. So much to do again this afternoon. Can't wait for this afternoon's sunset safari. I think this this will be the winner. These two. If you can find them this afternoon, it's going to be the winner. Yeah, nice to And actually for me, this morning's biggest, how um, can I say, joy. I love, as I said, one of my favorite sightings is mating leopards. But my one of my biggest joys this morning was Marips. Um, you know, after such a, um, a heavy day yesterday with him and surgery and all that and seeing him this morning climbing up the tree and trying to pull that impala out and uh, it just even looked like his wound is nicely closed up there with all the stitches. So, uh, yes, I think uh, to me that was uh, uh, the joy for me this morning was uh, my lips, definitely. Maybe we get them mating for one last time before the show closes. Let's see before the show ends here. Come on. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Panda thinks, oh, yeah. Not another day with Cedric. <laughs> Not another day. <laughs> Oh, well, it's my last minute of uh, the Sunrise uh, Safari. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this most amazing Saturday, Saturday Sunrise uh, Safari. It really delivered a lot of cats this morning. Absolutely crazy stuff. And I'm hoping it is going to continue for this afternoon's uh, Sunset Safari cross fingers for that of course we'll have to put a little bit of footwork in again this afternoon to try and locate uh, all these animals but yes you never know you never know so make sure that you do tune in to us this afternoon of course our highlight show starts at 3 and our sunset safari starts at 3 30 p.m central african time and then we will we shall see everybody on the safari but yes, from a panda, from this, uh, this honeymoon couple, <coughs> from the Wild Earth team and from myself, have a wonderful day further. We shall see you on the Sunset Safari.